Morning. So I started making this video yesterday. I had to stop and remake it. There are two things I think that you should do if you're looking for a home improvement and a good investment in your house. There are two things. One's gonna be a soft start system for your HVAC, and the other one's gonna be an overall surge protection that'll protect you from lightning, solar flares, EMP, whatever you want, any kind of massive energy system that hits your house. We'll talk about those two and I'll break them apart. I will put links in the description below. This is not a sponsored video. They did not send me these free. I purchased them with my own money. I put up affiliate links. I might make a few dollars off of it. That's how we do it. So I have unbiased reviews. That's the way I can do them. I will first, in the description down below, or not in the description, there's gonna be a white bar. I'll break this into two sections. The first one I'm gonna do, surge protection, the EMP shield. Use the code DOC if you do buy it, use the link below. And when you go there, when you use the code DOC, you'll actually get, I think it's an extra 50 bucks off. Um, I will link to the soft start system on Amazon, but I'll break this. You should see a white bar and I'll break it into two sections in case you don't want to listen to both of them. Okay, so let's talk about the EMP shield. I did a video on this um, before. I have one on my main house. I have one on the cabin over here. I have one on my truck and I have one on my UTV. I'll show you the one on my truck and one on the UTV. Um, I'll show you the little indicator light over in the cabin, but they're inside the panel and I don't feel like taking the panel off to show you. Here's, here's the important thing about the EMP shield. Number one, you're always gonna get a comment, but nothing can protect you from an EMP other than a Faraday cage. I've showed you guys before, um, just for fun, I built one of the largest Faraday cages on YouTube. It's up in my container and I have stuff inside there. Maybe I'll grab a little clip of that. But just for the hell of it, I decided to build a massive e uh, uh, Faraday cage up there and test it and it works. And one way to test this huge Faraday cage is you can put an AM, FM radio inside of here. It completely shuts down. The other way to test this is to take your phone start a YouTube video, put it inside of here, and all of a sudden, poof, your Wi-Fi disappears. Leave it in there a few more seconds, and all of a sudden, your cellular service disappears. No cellular service, no Wi-Fi, no AM, no FM. You know that your Faraday cage is pretty decent. So anyways, I understand that. The other thing is, you have to understand, high altitude, let's talk about the term EMP, high altitude bursts. There's certain testing that this has to go through to meet military spec standards. On that page below, I will put the reports, how it has to meet those standards. And it's one of the only products out there that meets or exceeds the military standards for high altitude bursts, including phase one, two, and three of an EMP. Now, let's talk the reason why I have it. The reason why I have it is I have all these trees around my house. We have lightning storms and I hate, I used to love storms, I hate them now because let me grab this. I have a transformer right back over here. That transformer blew because lightning hit back over here. So we get lightning strikes all the time out here. And a lot of people think you have a direct and you have an indirect current into your house or a lightning strike or current. A lot of people think that surge protection is only strictly for... So I have an underground power line here coming into my house. I'm sorry about this wind noise, but I got to make this video. So my meter is over here and my power goes into my house over here. And a lot of people think that that's where you, the, the place that you need to stop that. And that's not the only place. I'll, I'll share a funny story when I was growing up as a kid. Let me just share it now. My brother and I used to work at a summer camp and we worked in the kitchen and we stayed in these little cabins and we, a thunderstorm was coming and he was in his cabin and he was shaving a candle with a metal knife sitting on a metal bunk bed. Lightning struck not too far away. Lightning energizes the whole area. This whole area fills up with energy. The electricity went into the knife in his hand, went down through and out his leg into the bed. So energy fills up the whole thing. It's not just, it's gonna hit a power line and come into your house. It's that it can energize everything. Solar flare, a solar flare comes down and energizes everything. Solar flares have a tendency to follow power lines more so than an EMP. An EMP is just a blanket of energy that hits and it will basically fry anything that has a circuit board inside of it. That's the way you think of it. That's dumbing it down a little bit. So if you have a, a high-tech vehicle, it has a circuit board inside of it. If you have computers, TVs, anything that has 
um, any kind of circuit board inside of it, basically is a good chance it's gonna get fried. So in the old days, everyone used to say, there's a lightning storm, you need to go unplug your electronics. It's actually opposite. And this is, this is hard for people to grasp this. An EMP shield is a box and it's a shunter. Understand that term, shunter. And what it does is within one nanosecond, which is what, 500 millionths of a second? Within one nanosecond, it takes all that excess energy in your house and wiring system and it shunts it to the ground. <clears throat> so I have a ground rod over here and I actually put a second ground rod. If you put a second one in, they have to be six feet apart, by the way. So I put two ground rods in here. So if energy were to hit this house, it would immediately be sucked in by that EMP shield and sent to the ground. Now, there's a real cool video I found online. It's uh, Outdoors with Steve, I think it is. I'll, maybe I'll put it on that page. He actually takes 350 volts because he wanted to test this. Now, he does a direct insert into uh, a little system he built up, and then he does a static shock system that he does. This, we can have a full static charge hit. So our EMP shield still shows it is working. It's actually a pretty cool test. He turns everything back on and everything works and he is actually impressed. It's not an endorsement. He even says, he says, I'm just here testing with this, my own money. It's a really cool little test. Let me run over the cabin. Let me show you my EMP shield there. And then I'll actually show you the one in the truck. And again, I'm sorry about the wind out here, but I gotta get this video done. So when you, um, when you install EMP shield, you can install it yourself. I had my electricians do it while they were doing work. Basically you go to your panel and the first double pole breaker, a double pole breaker is usually like a 220 because it's touching on both poles inside your box. The first double pole breaker you have, that's where your EMP shield would actually connect. And then it also connects to your ground. So that's where those wires connect. Um, you can move down your breakers or I even contacted EMP shield and said can I already my first double pole is already in use can I double up on that and actually keep that connected and put the white and they said yes but you want it up at the and top. this was actually just spray foamed when we first bought it and we came in here and we did all the finishing work on it little dining room little kitchenette 4k TV and then I have a full-size bath back here and um, I just did, if you hadn't watched it, I watched it. This is my EcoFlow 5 stack. And we're getting ready to upgrade this a little bit. And here is... All right. If you can see this, that is the sensor showing that the EMP shield is actually installed in here and working. There is a $25,000 guarantee against lightning strikes. If lightning strikes your house or goes into your house the EMP shield box is gonna go poof and basically blow up. They will replace it free for 50 bucks. They charge you 50 bucks and shipping, I think, and they'll give you another one. They want it back, they wanna take it apart, and they wanna look at it, basically. If it's an EMP or solar flare, it does not need to be replaced. It can use multiple times, multiple times, multiple times. If it's lightning, however, the lightning will only last for one lightning strike. That's an important note. Now there's also, if you have solar generators or regular generators, these are called traps. I know I'll forget to link to these, so please remind me if I forget. Again, this is a shunter. So what does this do? This sucks in the energy, excess energy, and sends it to the ground. So here's a funny farm story before I show you this. See this right here? Those are mouse droppings. A mouse was up in here on my fire blanket and I had to pull out his nest. <laughs> Mice everywhere on a farm. Okay, so here's my EMP shield. You install this yourself. You can see the green light is on, showing it's actually working. You connect it into your battery. It's pretty simple. And then just screw it into the frame on the ground. Again, lightning EMP, energy hits your truck. The thing that you want is you want to pull that energy away from your electronics and send it to your frame, which is what's gonna ground it. Doc, why would you put one in your UTV? I have one in this one. I don't have one in the other one. This is a John Deere. This is a 
uh, what the hell's the model of it? It's an XUV 590M. This thing's expensive. It's about a $20,000 machine. Now, I'm going to be embarrassed to lift this up because it's filthy dirty. But you can see right here, EMP shield right here on my UTV. It's worth it for me to protect this unit, this model. It's not worth it for me to protect a $7,000 tractor supply UTV, which is the other one is. But this one is expensive. My truck is expensive. Even it's not too, it's fairly basic Z71 truck. Go try and buy one for less than $55,000, $60,000. They're expensive. Okay, so let's talk about the soft start systems. What is a soft start system? Basically, when you kick on your air conditioner system or your heating system, the compressor kicks on. And when a compressor kicks on, it needs a huge amount of energy to actually get going. When your lights go boof, if your air conditioning or heat kicks on, your lights flicker in your house, that's why. You're pulling a tremendous amount of current into your into your compressor motor to compressor to get that compressor going. A soft start, what does a soft start do? A soft start actually delays that and delivers the energy in a slower, instead of spiking up, it actually delivers it on a slower line. When we installed this, we did a test. Mine was pulling 32 amps when it started up. When we installed the soft start, we went down to 16 amps. That's a huge difference. That's a 50% reduction on startup. It makes all the difference in the world. Here's the problem. When we redid this house, it was during the end of COVID, and when they installed this train unit, the master board, which is down in my crawl space near the blower system, they couldn't get the right part. So they put in a temporary part. And what they had to do is they had to toggle the switches up to let, not let the compressor run and just have the heating coils run, if you know what heating coils are. Well, when they replaced it, apparently someone didn't switch that back. So my soft start wasn't working. I tried it on my, my EcoFlow backup system and it was like, up oh, too much voltage. And I was like, what's going on? So I was on the phone with the people at MicroAir. I was on the phone. My neighbor is a brilliant HVAC tech young guy, by the way, he installed it. He was on a trip, I was texting him. No one could figure it out. Finally, he got back from his trip. He went under my house and he said, dude, he said, someone forgot to toggle up your compressor on when your heat kicked on. So for the past year, which we don't run the heat much because we have a wood stove. So for the past year, anytime my heat came on, the compressor wasn't coming on. I didn't know it because it's way over here and bedrooms over here. So anyways, he kicked it on and sure enough. So one of the reasons why I knew it wasn't working is because you actually can Bluetooth into this and actually get a report. If you have a problem, you can Bluetooth in and it'll send a report over to MicroAir and they can take a look at it, which is actually pretty cool. Now, it used to be that when you bought these things, you had to figure out which model you needed to match up to your compressor. Not anymore. The new smart version, it's one smart version for all systems. So, you no longer have to decide which one you're using. Just buy that one and have it installed. Can you install it yourself? Uh, if you're really good with electricity and schematics, sure. I ain't doing it. So I, a good idea is if you're due for your annual service, call and schedule an annual service and say, hey, I've also got a soft start I want you to install while you're here, and that'll save you an additional trip charge. I would guess they'd probably cut charge you about 150 bucks to install it. I don't know, 100, 150. Who knows what they'll charge. But anyways... So here is my soft start. Now some of these units have room for this to go inside. Mine did not, it's outdoor rated. And when it kicks on, there's a green light that show it's on. It says that it's a Bluetooth. And let me tell you what, 50% reduction in startup is huge. So anyways, the people uh, were really good at um, the soft start micro air. They sent me another one because we couldn't figure out what's going on. They said, well, here's, let, let us send you another one because I told them I was doing this video. They sent me another one to replace this one. So when he came over, my neighbor came over, I said, well, I got an extra one. You want it? And he goes, hell yeah, I want it. And he said, my house has kind of a crappy heating HVAC system on it. And he said, these, he says his compressors, his, his capacitor always fails on his models. Now a capacitor, so if you don't understand, a capacitor is just a storage of energy. 
while, while your electricity is on, it stores energy. And when you turn on this thing, not only do you bring in the current from your, elect, from your house, but the capacitor also delivers a shock of energy. It requires a huge amount of energy to get these things started. So that's why if you're running, this is a gas generator. I can run a gas generator or I can run my electric EcoFlow. If you're gonna run that, you need to get a soft start on your system. It'll also extend out the life of this. It's so much more gentle on your compressor and HVA system to have a soft start on it. I highly recommend it. So those are the two things that I highly recommend. Um, if you're gonna have any kind of backup battery system, any kind of generator system, and you wanna be able to run your HVAC, which I can now do, get a soft start on it. If you have any concerns about lightning, protecting your house, um, EMP, solar flares, whatever you're worried about, get that EMP shield. I'll link to it down in the description below and I'll also build a page. I just want to get this done real quick because we just figured out this soft start on the system and I want to get the video out. I got a bunch more videos to do. I'll talk to you later. Doc.